While the weather outside might be frightful, this game inside will be delightful. So if there's no place to go, game on. I'm Aiden Hallett, joined with Eric Hallett, and welcome to the Dave Anderchuk Arena, where the Kill TVs will be taking on the Niagara Falls Canucks. The Canucks have one of the best offenses in the league right now, and the Bees are going to have a handful as they start with goaltender Marco Costantini. He owns a 7-6 record, a 248 goals against, and a 920 save percentage. Zach Morinette for the Canucks. He owns a 14-2 record, a 214 goals against, and a 931 save percentage. As we start up with a face-off win from the Bees and a puck hits the Raptors, I'll throw it over to, er to you, Eric. What exactly do the Bees need to do against this deadly offense to not only make the night easier on their defensive core, but on their net minor, Marco Cotentini? Well, they have to be smart with their passes. They need to make sure they, see, they support each other. They can't have players going across the blue line to get stretch passes. This team is so good on both ends of this, especially the offense, as you mentioned. This is a real character test for for Ken Piroff's defensive core as there are going to be a lot of pushing against from the Niagara Falls Canucks. And we start off in the B zone. That one passed Fanda on it and Dylan Hill goes back for it. Dylan Hill currently the leading defensive scorer. Incredibly enough, he has 49 points and that's just one off of the league lead of 50. Nathan Bastason has the puck in his own zone. He wheels it out, passes it off. Puck comes in and it's shot easily gloved down on the hard shot coming from Mitch Mendonca. And as we mentioned, one of the best offensive teams in the Golden Horseshoe, they have a plus 80 goal scoring differential. Their top four players have 179 points. The entire t Hamilton Kilty Beast team, 222. Those kind of stats are just absolutely baffling where one team can be so dominant. And we remember them from last year. They weren't nearly this good, but clearly a lot of players stepped up. And they also got a little help from some outside players as well as that puck is thrown around by Zach Moore. He's definitely been very sturdy in net for them as he is currently second in the league in save percentage with a 931 save percentage as mentioned earlier. Puck kept back in. It was Matthew Riva. Now Luke Croucher misses this pass and Riva comes in. He's got McCabe with him. That one's shot and deflected off of Ferguson, but Luke Croucher comes back for the puck. Croucher tries to find Hughes, the leading point scorer for the team. But that ends up being an icing call as he wasn't over center and Hughes wasn't able to get to the puck. Face off will be coming to the left of goaltender Costantini and the faceoff is won but no possession as it's cleared out by TJ Hughes. Becker has the puck in his own zone, he passes it off. That one deflected into the zone. Bees try to go back with it but Eric Becker pokes that one away but he gives it to Baller who shoots that one just missed wide. Duarte back in the lineup after his absence from last game, that one deflected in front, Tipo going for it. He falls over to the goaltender but the puck was loose and now Coming out of the zone. The Canucks finally trying to get in, but as Ryan Donovan pushed off the puck. Mark Duarte, he's hounded hard, and he's pushed down at the line, no call. That was Garrett Downey imposing his will, but Freddie Teeple now has the puck. Teeple, one of the most penalized players in the league. He currently sits third with 91 penalty minutes. He's pushed over nicely as Alec Vent, the recent trade acquisition from the Welland Canadians, pushes his man down. Mark Duarte has the puck, he tries to make a move to the inside, but Becker pushes him off. Duarte puts it in his feet, and now Noah Ballard has it. Ballard shoots that one, it's deflected. Duarte can't get to the puck, and it's over the head of Freddie Deeple, and put down as it was Andrew Bruno trying to get to the puck. And what a good shift for Freddie Deeple and Mark Duarte. They're really grinding hard, along with Noah Ballard, against the defensive unit for the Niagara Falls Canucks, and that's something they need to build momentum going into this first period and that one shot up high that hit off the shoulder of Moore and it laid there he didn't even see it but luckily none of the bees were there they're all boxed out Nathan Nays battling in there he's a recent call up from the Mississauga reps of AAA he's getting his first taste of GOJHL action the pass Aaron pass goes all the way down the ice and another icing call against the bees 
And if you're Ken Perra, if you're going to be happy with those shifts, you might not be getting the shots on it because of the great defensive shot blocking from the Niagara Falls Canucks, but if you can stay in the opposition end, it just means less time they'll have in your end, which means less opportunities for them to score. A shot blocked. Dylan Hill has it fired and a right pad safe made. But Stacey shoots and that one gets through a crowd but ends up wide. Hill, he's a great puck moving defenseman but turns it over. Naves tries to go for it, and Bastason gets run into, but it's actually a Kilty Beast player who ends up going down. Puck dumped in, and the, some of the Bees go off for a change as Mason Reeves goes in on a four check. Mondu spearing himself with Mandonka, and that one into the feed, and goes back to the front of the net, and there's Justin Kyle going to the front. He's a dangerous man with the puck, and he just misses getting a tap in. Kyle in the corner. Tries to find David D'Agostino. But it's a cross-ice pass who finds Hill. Hill wires that one in a glove save, but not into the glove as it was just put down to the ice by the goaltender, Costantini. Now Mondu has the puck back in his own zone. Mondu passes that one up and a little chip pass. Mendoka intercepts that. Now he rolls back in his own line and finds an outlet pass for Justin Kyle. That one turned right over to number four as a backhand pass. Was not an advised one, and that one cleared all the way back down the ice. Where Schneider has the puck, and he finds an uplet pass, and now they're breaking in on the right side as a bad change was coming. That one shot and deflected off a stick of a B in high and out of play. Unfortunately, the Kilty Bees are getting a little sloppy with their passes. Eric Mondu had the chance to go around the net as he had Kyle behind him. Instead, he decided to back pass it to no one. He didn't even take a look. And luckily for him, Raposo was there to pin him to the boards and end up getting that puck out. But right now, the Kill TVs have to be smart with their passes. TJ Hughes can't get a handle on the puck, and Schneider throws that one back in for Patrick McCabe. McCabe dumps it into the B zone. Bernecki tries to make a play along the boards and ends up coming outside into the neutral zone. Justin Schneider plays that one, and it's turned over on the boards. It's dumped back in, and Zach Moore will play it off his stick. And another chip play outside of the zone, and Patrick McCabe gloves it down but can't keep it. Beast try to recruit, and that one off that pass just a little behind Hughes as it hit him in the feet, and he battles for the puck with Justin Schneider, and Patrick McCabe tries to play it up again, this time turned over to Marino Moro. Mark Duarte, he dumps that in. This is a high-powered line for the Kilty Bees. They're going to need a lot of offense for them tonight if they want a chance to stay in this game. That one passed up off this skate of Freddie Teeple. Alex Jerome. A little pressure coming from Ryan Donovan, but that one cleared, and Eric Becker play, uh, plays that one off. Ryan Donovan loses control, and this puck has a mind of its own. It's just dancing around with some nice moves in the center eye zone from Noah Ballert, who takes a high shoulder. No call on that one. He was a little upset with it, but play goes on. Garrett Downey should have been penalized. That was a direct hit to the head. I'm not sure how it was missed. And that was going to the net. That was Garrett Downey, who would have been able to get left alone if he could have taken that pass, but he ends up falling. And a chance averted for the Hamilton Kilty Bees. Now here comes Noah Baller. Baller trying to make the play, but he's knocked down, and he's pushed down by Andrew Bruno. Back to the point. Jerome keeps it in. Alec Vent. He's hauled down by Baller. No call on that play either. Freddie Teeple tries to make the play. Donovan scrubs him out along the boards, and the hulking Aiden McLeod now has the puck. Going through the zone. Teeple shoots deflected, and that one goes high off the boards into the corner. And that's about the fourth time the defense have made a long stretch pass to a Kilty B forward, and it's gone in their skates. The defense are just barely misfiring on their pass, and it's not setting up the offensive rush that the Kill TVs are trying to get. Now coming in, Cadero shoots and a nice save. The first nice stop of the night for Zach Moore. At least you can say that the Beats have been maintaining some pressure. It's been back and forth. Started it. The first shift was all in the Canucks zone. The second shift was all in the B zone. Last couple shifts have kind of alternated in between zone time. So both coaches are probably pretty happy with this outcome so far. Yeah, both teams are definitely going to be happy. They're both going to try and implement their structures, but it's going to be kind of hard. This is turning into a bit of a rock and talking game. as a penalty coming up. 
And the first power play of the game is going to go to the Kilty Bees. It's a high stick call. And it looks like it's going against Dylan Hill. So the Kilty Bees are going to go on their first power play of the night. And the power play is brought to you by Mighty Expedite. So we'll see what they can draw up here. Their power play hasn't been the best this year. Their power play is currently 18th in the league at 14%. So not exactly a great record there. And then, of course, third at 87% for the penalty kill for the Canucks as Marino Moro has it behind the net. And that one cleared all the way down the ice by David D'Agostino. Raposo plays that one around the boards. Bees start up in their own zone. Coming on the left side, Marino Moro. Doesn't have a lot of room, but Brunecki has it. Passed a little too far ahead of Raposo, but the long reach keeps it in. He was up against Justin Kyle on that, so an offensive player on the penalty kill is always good to see from any coaching standpoint. Pass back to the point, Raposo. Brunecki. Tries to find his man Hughes down low, does. Brunecki into the slot, Moro. Back to Raposo. Raposo shoots. Blocking arm save and pushed aside by Zach Moore. And the puck still kept in. Reno Moro shoots and that's a slap shot save. Now going into the corner. Holden Rogers. Oh, he was hit, but not knocked off the puck. Renecki shoots off the goal post. And that was shot. A slap shot from Raposo trying to get that on. And another save made by Moore. Moro in the slot. He can't get the shot. He was snapping for the stick to get it. Moro tries to get it again. And it's just out of his reach. Bernecki has it at the point once more. Back to Hughes. Hughes, only 30 seconds remaining now. Bernecki waits, surveys, takes the shot, deflected, and another bad save made by Moore. Justin Kyle finally gets that puck out of the zone with only 15 seconds remaining in the power play. That was almost, that was just over a minute and a half of consistent power play pressure. What a great way to start off your first power play for the Kilty Bees. Second power play unit is out there, but their power play time is now over. Dylan Hill out of the box, and this could be a three-on-one. If they can't get back in time, here it comes. Shoots out a nice save by Constantini. Rebound and scores! The Canucks come right back down the ice as Hill came out of the box. And a rebound goal. Looks like it might be Andrew Bruno. And it's all of Andrew Bruno, no assists needed for this play. He taps it out of the air on a nice cross attempt pass from the Kilty Bees. Unfortunately for them, the power play had just ended, so one of the players had to come on for the Niagara Falls Canucks and it ended up on a three on one. Mondi tried racing back in order to negate it, or at least make it to at least it's a three on two instead. And it was just a shot that went through the goaltender and digging loose for it was Bruno following up his own shot. And the unfortunate part of that goal is that you had built such great momentum from that power play, you almost had two or three goals go in on it, and now you're down by one. Zach Moore had that played off the boards. We were watching Zach Moore in the pre-skate, and he's a really good puck handler. We were mentioning his saucer passes so one thing you don't want to do is give number 31 the puck. No, we were we were just marveling at his ability to crisply throw that puck with little to no wobble in it in the air and land flat almost directly in front of a player's stick. So if the Kilty Bees will not want to play a dump and chase game against Zach Moore, he's going to ring that puck around and give it straight to one of his players and it's not going to be an easy time for the Kilty Bees. And you can guarantee that having a puck playing goaltender like Moore is more than enough reason to give you a good goals against average. Noah Ballard on the outside. He's coming against Alex Venn. He's pushed off the puck. That puck cleared out. But Mark Duarte is able to just keep that one in with Kyle all over him. He has Teeple in front and Noah Ballard finds Teeple. He's got Beck all over his back. Vent and Duarte exchange stick blows, but Evans throws that one all the way down the ice and it looks like it's just going to make it to icing. Evans doesn't agree with it. What an icing call coming against the Canucks nonetheless. And after a goal like that, what you want to do is to kill the Bees. You just want to 
wash that from your mind. Just forget that it happened and just go back to the way you were playing before because they were they were pretty much dominating the Canucks. Despite the fact that it was a power play, they were completely dominant. They weren't giving the Canucks a chance to clear that. And when they did, they intercepted it except for within the last 15 seconds of that power play. So if they want to keep doing that. And here comes a 2-on-1. Justin Kyle tries to make a pass across and Constantini plays it. A nice spin pass from Ben Evans to start that off. David D'Agostino. Back down to Kyle. To Mendonca. Shoots in a nice low glove save. A stabilizing save made by Constantini. And Constantini doesn't look like he's any worse for wear after that goal. He did get bumped into a little bit, but that was a, that was after the fact that the puck had gone in and he couldn't find it. So Constantini, he's he's got to remain sharp and just just get back to his game. That goal was just a fluke. No pass for nice save by Constantini. It was a quick shot on a spin pass, and that was. Looked like Matthew Rebo may have taken the shot, maybe Justin Randawa, but a very nice stop by number one in net. Faceoff coming to his left. Randawa wins the faceoff cleanly. Maybe a little too clean and a little too hard because it went up into his player's legs and no shot. That one just goes right through the crease. That one shot off the outside of the net by Patrick McCabe. Now the Bees recuperate with Bernecki. His pass just hops over a stick. The Bees try to get inside the zone, they do. Marina Moro had to wait up though. Puck cleared up and hits the rafters, so it's gonna go out of play. You can really feel the emotion in the players tonight. Both teams are top teams in their division, so they, they wanna assert their dominance over each other. And physically, it feels like there's been a lot of tension building up between these players and you can feel that later in the game probably around this maybe halfway through the second third it's going to start exploding and there's players are just going to be hit left and right probably some dumb penalties taken but a very very emotional game about to happen you happen to see that a lot with with mostly divisional teams because these teams mostly play in their division for the year out of the 50 games they play so these guys get to know each other quite well, and even though some players come and go, most of the team stays intact, and rivalries are usually renewed by the time you face them next. And It's another shot that goes out of play. It's about the third whistle in a row that the puck has gone out of play. So the pace is starting to slow down now. It was a little bit open before with a couple of rushes, but right now the game is starting to settle in, and this might benefit... The Bees or could benefit the Canucks. We'll just have to see who takes advantage. And also on to another thing about playing the teams and renewing rivalries. This is also off of a back-to-back. -back. They went to St. Catharines and now they're back here in Hamilton. So these teams already faced each other a few nights ago. Now they're facing each other again. So any hostilities that, was, that started last game, it's going to most likely end up finishing up here. Seven fifty-one remaining in the first period, a one-nothing score for the Niagara Falls Canucks. Face-off coming to the right of Moore. Nathan Naves, the call-up, tries to make a play. He goes into the corner with Dylan Hill, who easily manhandles him. Hughes try to get the puck back, but Nathan Bestason throws that one in off a stick. McLeod has Todorovic all over him. And that puck comes bouncing right back in the slot. Dylan Hill shot and a pad save made. Todorovic tried to get that to the front of the net. McLeod tries to two-hand lumberjack that one out, and Todorovic with his speed getting to that puck first. That one comes back right, right back in front, and Jerome trying to clear that back out. The Bees can't get it out of their own zone right now. Hill, he's pressured by Naves. That one shot around by Cadero, and TJ Hughes finally chips that one out, and the Bees release a little bit of pressure. Hill starts up. He passes that one off. Coming to his own, Noah Perlick fires on the backhand and a save made by Costantini. Ryan Donovan tries to throw that one back in, but he just keeps that one in. And nope, they do call it offside. That was Riley Cool making that call at the blue line. That was a very close call. From up here, it's hard to tell because we're on that angle. But down at that line, Cool must have 
just seen that puck clear the line. If not, Donovan had a great scoring opportunity rushing wide. Face off scrummed and won by the Kilty Beast with help from Anthony Pinelli. Pinelli tries to kick it. He does get a piece, but it still gets through him to Alec Vent. And another defense pass goes into the feet of the Hamilton Kilty B4. They need to stop doing that. They need to start finding the sticks of their forwards. Raposo in the center ice zone. Nice play to Croucher. He does find him this time. Croucher on the backhand shoots and he airmails that one wide. Raposo chips that one. That one was also going wide, but gloved down by Moore. He ends up covering it up because none of his defensemen were there to take the puck from him. And just goes to show you on that last play, first pass into the feet, turned over, went back to the Kill DB's defense. Second pass went to the stick of Croucher. He could just keep going straight and have, instead of having to look down and find the puck and corral it into a good stick handling position. Now in the center ISO and the Kill DBs have it again. Raposo finds Mason Reeves. He drops it. That one passed in front, Holden Rogers almost fed, uh, threaded a needle on that one. Now Ben Evans, the captain, coming on. Nice spin move at the blue line, but Mason Reeves takes him. Justin Kyle, another nice spin move, and the Canucks go away with some spins, but nothing more than that. Coming back in the zone, here comes Rogers. Shoots that one off the stick of Justin Schneider, and out of play. What a rush for number 10. What a goal that would have been from Evans. A few spin moves. Had he found his player off to the left of Constantini, that might have been a tap-in. But it almost reminded me of Mitch Marner's goal last game against, of uh, Miss Marner's assist, I, I mean, against Philadelphia, where he just tried to do a few too many moves and ended up beating John Tavares for a tap-in. Yeah, and that's what happens when you have Justin Kyle and Ben Evans on the same line. They both almost have 100 points. Oh, what a goal! The rebound from Costantini was let out. He almost got a piece, and it looks like Patrick McCabe. Yeah, Patrick McCabe leading the celebration, and he's got his goal. It's his 11th of the year. And I guess if you start talking about goals, goals will happen, and Patrick McCabe just follows up on a nice first shot attempt. Constantini had no opportunity to make that stop. It went a little too far out of his reach. He's not a small goalie by any means. And he had to try and reach, and he just barely missed it with that right skate. That more attests to a defensive breakdown than it really is Costantini's fault. No, you can't fault Costantini at all for that play. It was just, it was a one-on-two that Costantini had to try and weather. Canucks come in, backhand, forehand, comes right back in front, but Noah Baller picks up the puck. Tries to find his man. Freddie Tipo goes in, takes his man into the zone. Duarte tries to get the puck. Bollard stops it up, fires, and that one goes wide. Freddie Teeple with no goalie in the net. Is now Zach Moore lost his stick, and the net has been dislodged. What a great opportunity that would have been for the Bees, as not only was the goaltender out of position for a couple seconds, he didn't have his stick in his hands. And that offensive opportunity was brought to you by one of the most unlikely sources of offense for the Kilty Bees, Freddie Teeple. He just he bumped into the... Niagara's Canucks for, uh, defense forced him back. That puck bounced in his skates. He managed to one-hand it over to one of his to Mark Duarte, who couldn't get much done after that. Puck cleared back out as it's Bastasin over to Dylan Hill. He dumps that one back into the zone, and Alex Jerome just misses it. He tried to get to it a little earlier than he wanted to, and it goes right by him. Bees get the puck back out. They tried to at least, but it's still at the line and still kept in. Nice play by Owen Holmes. Todorovic, we've seen him go on the forecheck a couple times, and Noah Baller expertly slices that one away from him. Baller, a pass that's behind his man, and now it's a two-on-two -two coming back with Milos Todorovic. Shot, that one misses the goaltender and the net. Two Bs miss it, and it's a nice pass out to the left side. Noah Baller comes in, tries for Duarte, oh, and that one just missed the net. A nice pass from Baller, but Duarte mishandles it. And nice play by Mondu as there was a cherry picker Trying to get out of the zone, and Owen Holm tries to find someone. It would have gone for icing, but that actually hit the linesman in the skate, negating that chance. What a beautiful pass from Noah Baller. He held for a second. May look like he was going to shoot, and he tried to feather it across to Duarte, who barely missed the net. Marino Moro mishandles the puck. Ryan Donovan goes in on Mondu and gets the puck first. Donovan, he's hit hard in the corner, but... Coming back out, that one shot, almost deflected. Bruno, now it's held from Garrett Downey. 
Puck almost played out of the zone. And now it's a quick two-on-two -two coming back the other way. Cadero, nice play to Morrow. He shoots. That one's blocked. No B in the center ice zone to take that puck away. And it's another penalty coming back up. And it's a tripping call. Looks like it might be going against Marino Morrow. I believe Marino, Marino Morrow was the one who was tripped. No, it's, it's Garrett Downey, my apologies. Garrett Downey was all over Marino Morrow and he took him down when the puck wasn't near him. An easy call for Myers who was right in the corner waiting and watching the play. So the Bees are 0 for 1 on their mighty expedite power play and they have chance number 2. Holden Rogers tries to get to the front of the net but it's behind with TJ Hughes. Brnecki, Raposo deflected, easy shot to take. Raposo over to Brnecki again. Nice pass to Morrow, he shoots that one, misses high and wide. Raposo, nice pass, couple little touches. Brnecki has it at the point to Raposo. He winds, doesn't take the shot, that one's deflected away by Schneider. Holden Rogers has it again. Passes it over to the captain. Back down low, he finds Hughes. Brnecki. Now to Raposo. Passes it into the slot. Marino Moro, that one shot! Nice pad save low. As unfortunately, Hughes had to stop it before he could take it. Marino Moro to Raposo. Fires! That one's blocked in a massive crowd. No way he was getting that one through. Raposo back down to Rogers. This line going to work again. A full minute now in the zone of power play time. Raposo, one timer deflected by Marino Morrow. May have been better to let that one go as it had some wit to it. And finally cleared back down the, to the other side of the zone. As 43 seconds remaining in the second power play unit is finally going to get a little time to try to enter the zone. It's not often you see that much consecutive power play time nowadays in hockey. And it's been great puck movement. Shot scores! Whoa, what a tip! Alex Jerome shot it, and it was about a shoulder-high tip onto the other side of the net. What a deft play, and it looks like Noah Baller got it. And as I was about to say before Noah Baller rudely interrupted me, he... It's been a bit of an atypical power play unit for the Kill to Beast. They're more noted for passing it across their defense, going down low to the corner, passing it back between their defense, using them in that sort of fashion. Instead, they've been passing it to the boards and doing those quick little passes between each other, between the circles and the boards, and of course using the defense. And they managed to get a nice shot from Jerome through the crowd. They've been having trouble getting it through on the power play, and a beautifully placed tip from Noah Bollard that Zach Moore had no chance on. And you could tell the goaltender was trying to look for that puck. He didn't see it until it went right by him. Players are hoping that was going to be a high tip. It ends up being a beautiful goal as Luke Croucher was tripped in the zone. No call there. Sometimes, although, Luke Croucher moves his feet so fast that he trips itself. We've seen that happen before. That looked more like it was Bestation's fault. He took him a little too hard into the, into the ice. Final minute coming now in the first period. Dylan Hill tries to shoot that one in. It's blocked. Now the Bees need to try to get it on their own zone. Hamilton trying to get out. Now they do. It looks like they might have a four on three right now coming. Drop past Ferguson. Almost a dangerous turnover. Trying to find Rees. Ferguson just clears that one back in. 42 seconds remaining. Rogers put a little too many stick handles. He had to go outside of the blue line. Rogers gets the puck back. Puck just won't sit down for him, and he's stripped of it by Justin Kyle. Nice play at the Kilty Bees blue line to play the body by Ferguson as he knocks Ben Evans right off that puck. Kyle tries to center it. TJ Hughes trying to make a play, and he does get it back. He serpentines his way, and Mendonca now has the puck. He sees Justin Kyle, who's poaching at the line, and last five seconds remaining, and we're going to go into the second period with a late power play goal from Noah Baller having the lead. It's now 2-1 to one for the Niagara Falls Canucks.
Welcome back to the high for the second period. The Niagara Falls Canucks leading the Kill TBs 2-1 after the first period. I'm Hayden Hallett, joined back with Eric Hallett. And Eric, I'd have to say that that first period wasn't a total domination by any club, but I'd give the edge to the Niagara Falls Canucks. They did have a little more time on attack in the offensive zone. So what do you think that the Bees have to do to come back out and get this game even? And more than that, moving forward, keep the game in their favor. This is going to be a rarity, but I'm going to say get to the power play. Draw some penalties from Niagara Falls Canucks because that power play, the two opportunities that they had were spectacular. They hemmed them in their own zone. They made some great passes. Sure, they didn't get as many shots through as they would have liked, but the shots they did get through were good, solid chances. And they just basically pushed the Niagara Falls back on their heels. And if they can get back to the specialty teams, then I, can, I have a good feeling they're going to tie this game up. Both teams just waiting this last 30 seconds for the clock to drain. And once that clock is drained, we will have the start of the second period. And they've decided to vacate that last 23 seconds and go straight on in. We start off with Justin Kyle in the faceoff draw. He's going off against Holden Rogers. Kyle wins that one cleanly, and the second period is officially underway. Vestasian tries to do a long pass, and that one gets through a bunch of feet and ends up going right on goal where Constantini covers it up. So another face-off coming in just 14 seconds later, and it'll be to the left of the Kilty Bees goaltender. Justin Kyle wins another one, but that one was cleared out by Derek Raposo. Dylan Hill has Mason Reeves all over him, and Hill finish, gets finished off his check by Mason Reeves. Rogers tries to make a nice play in front, and almost found its way to the slot but unfortunately that puck just bounced away from Reno Moro. Reeves goes in on Hill again he goes to the outside tries to pass it in front but Vestation cuts that one off. Raposo steps up keeps his man along the boards and he's gonna get a holding call for that bad penalty play as Derek Raposo held his man up now coming back the other way. That one was passed off by Evans finally touched up and a holding call Coming against Derek Raposo, so the first power play of the night coming for the Niagara Falls Canucks. And that's not the way the Hamilton Kilt Bees want to start this second period. They're already down 2-1. to one. They know that this is a great puck possession team in the Niagara Falls Canucks. Very highly potent on the offense. And the last thing they want to do is give them the opportunity to set up that deadly strike. And not only that, you have one of your better penalty killers, Derek Raposo, sitting in the box. So face off one by Niagara. That one shot and blocked valiantly by Lou Croucher, who's a great penalty killer of his own right. And that one passed back down Justin Kyle. He tries to find Evans. Nice saucer pass. He put it about three feet in the air, but it was deflected away by the defenseman. Hill. Passes that one over. That one shot high in the net by Mandonka. Now David D'Agostino has the puck. Back down to Hill. He gives a little pass to Mandonka. That one shot and into the feet of D'Agostino. And down was... The goaltender, Costantini, and Colin Ferguson goes down to block it and then cleared back down the ice. A solid 30-second shift for the penalty killers. A great shift for Colin Ferguson. Knocks out a saucer pass that was three feet in the air, and then he gets across, and he absolutely denies D'Agostino of trying to tuck it in short side. Mitch Mendonca has Cordero all over him, and Ben Evans gives that one away. Poked away, Cordero has a chance, shorthanded. He's got Dylan Hill on him, on a breakaway, shoots! Oh, and he missed the net! What a chance for Cordero! He was in on a shorthanded breakaway, and he missed! Now approaching the two-minute mark, coming in is Mendonca. He looks to go around the entire zone. He still has it, pass that one across to Kyle. That one's played in front. Mason Reeves intercepts it with his hand and then plays down back down to the front. Shoot, save, Reno! Oh, that one was blocked! What a nice block in front of the net. I think that was Jerome getting a piece of it. Alex Jerome just saved the goals standing in front of the net. One of the Canucks forwards 
Had an empty net to shoot it into, and he just couldn't get enough of it to go in, and now Noah Bollard has it. The B is going in on the attack shorthanded, and he's finished along the boards. That was Bastason pushing him into the boards. Alex Vent, the defenseman, moves up. Last five seconds of the power play, and now the Bees have a chance to go along the other side. And a successful kill for Hamilton. Bollert walks into the blue line. He goes around, finds himself some space, tries to slap pass across. Nice move to the inside. Puck bouncing, he passes it off. Down past in front, but it doesn't make it past Alex Vent. Brenecki tries to make a pass into the slot. He can. That was a bad pass intercepted by McCabe. McCabe coming in the left side, and he loses control. And Brenecki makes up for a bad pass with a nice defensive play with the poke check. Foul puck given away again inside the zone, and Patrick McCabe falls over. Noah Bollard goes in against Brandon Bastason. He's held up, and no call. Pass to the middle, and that one behind his man. But now Mondu steps up. He's checked at the blue line, and Croucher uses his speed to get on the puck first. The Patrick Brown shoots more! Oh, what a save by Moore! Goes for the wraparound, can't get it! Hughes shoots that one off the side of the net. What a chance for Marino Morrow! I'm surprised Marino Morrow didn't tuck that in short side. He was all alone. I'm not sure how the Niagara Falls Canucks missed him. Couple Canucks converge, but the Kill TV has come out. It's an odd man rush. Justin Schneider back. That's TJ Hughes coming up. He's trying to find Croucher, but he's being held up along the boards. Nice defensive play. He does a stick lift and look like Justin Schneider went flying because of the stick lift. That one played bouncing back in front of the net. Almost a dangerous play, but it's cleared out of the zone. Now TJ Hughes has it. He dumps that one in. He's checked that one. Bouncing another odd bounce in front of the net. This time Zach Moore almost got caught. Cleared back out. Owen Holmes tries to make a play with it, but his man is deep into the zone and offside. So Luke Croucher gets to take it. He goes around his man. He still has the puck. Has Mario Nomaro in front. Nice curling drag. Poked off his stick. In front. He's got the chance. No get you down up the side of the net. TJ Hughes can't get a stick on it either. That one shot and missed wide of the net. Raposo keeps it in. That one shot deflected just wide. Canucks came all so close. And now a penalty coming up. And it's a slashing call to Raposo who just got out of the box. And he's going right back in. And Ryan Donovan just taunted the Kill TP's bench after that power play. I'm not sure if it was sold or not, but Raposo did hack the glove off of his hand. And a, a very undisciplined play as Raposo once again is going to be putting his team down a man. And it was off of the back of some great forechecking from the Kilty Bees. They were all over the Niagara Falls Canucks getting about three or four different chances to solve Zach and Moore. It, and Aiden McLeod starts it off with a good clear. He slaps it all the way down the ice. D'Agostino finds Hill. Hill rushes in on the right side. He shoots that one around the net to find Ben Evans. The Niagara captain has it on the backhand. He spins around. Aiden McLeod not letting him get any further into the slot. D'Agostino. He's being pressured hard by Reeves. Hill now across to Mendonca. That one to Kyle. That one shot. And that one missed wide on the one-timer. Hill can't quite keep it in. And he has to recoup in his own zone. Pass across Mitch Mendonca. Hard pass across. Ben Evans, his pass goes off a shin pad, but coming back into the zone is D'Agostino, and that one clear off of Cosentini, and along the half boards, Holden Rogers has a chance, oh, and it was just taken away, he missed it twice with his stick, he could have had a breakaway, if only he could have got contact with that puck. Rogers has a good job of just dumping it softly into the zone, and we've already gone through a mi almost a minute and a half of this power play, and still nothing on the board, not even a shot on this power play yet. It's been some great defensive play from the, the penalty killing unit of the Kilty Bees. They're not allowing those inside passes to connect. They're forcing them to be on the outside. And, and unfortunately, if you're Niagara Falls Canucks, you're only being given the outside, and that's one of the hardest ways to score is to take a shot from outside of the dot or from the corner at the blue line 
what you want is you want to get between the circles, and the Kill TPs are just not giving it to them. Zach Moore comes out to play the puck as 20 seconds remains on this power play. This, what we thought would be lethal, has actually been detrimental so far. It has not given them any attack time, and Kadero comes at the two on two shorthanded. Kadero tries to drop pass. He lost it, shoots that one. A difficult blocking arm save. He fought it off with Moore. And now Noah Ballard has the puck, and he does the rest of the job and dumping that one in the zone. Derek Raposo rushes back to the bench. So another very successful and very impressive kill for the Bees. That could give them momentum, and they come back in the zone. It was almost offside. Hughes thought it was going to be, but the linesman called it fair game. Hughes goes in on Vestasen. Vestasen gives him a slash on the hands. Freddy Teeple goes in against Matthew Riva. He's being worked over now. He's got Bastasin. He looked like he was... Freddy Teeple is giving a couple shots now. Him and Bastasin are going at it. They don't like each other right now on the back end. Nice pass. Oh, Duarte had a one-timer. Couldn't get a lot on it, but he got it almost on net, but it was deflected before it got there. Hughes and Teeple making a, little, a couple little passes, and Teeple tries to make it to the front of the net now, and he's battling with McCabe, and he's going to get a penalty for it. A shot right to the face of Patrick McCabe, who's a tough customer. And he gives him another one. Teeple's got to be careful. Teeple was battling really hard with Vestation earlier. After Vestation took a slash at Hughes, Hughes, you could see him looking at both referees. Neither of them had their hand up. And once again, another Niagara Falls Canucks player taunting the Kilty Bees bench. This time, it was Patrick McCabe, the one who drew the penalty. He was kind of giving the Mond he was kind of giving the bench, but it looked like he was mostly jerking it at Eric Mondu. The yeah, come on, give me some more, give me some more. He's a tough guy. He knows how to play his role. And I'll give full credit to Patrick McCabe. He goaded Freddie Teeple, who was a known penal a penalty guy, into taking a, in a dumb penalty, and he did a very good job of it. Well, when you draw penalties for a living, as McCabe does, you kind of learn how to you kind of learn both ends of the penalty giving process. Canucks almost got a goal on a cross crease pass, but now D'Agostino plays that one in front and a between the legs play by Kyle. Can't get any shot off, and Evans now a cross crease pass gets to him. D'Agostino at the point settles it down. Evans, another cross crease pass, that one shot, and that one gets deflected by Reeves. A nice stick play. Mendonca came that one in, and it was deflected out of play. So the puck movement has already been much better on this third power play for the Canucks than the other two previous we've seen. And it seems like the Kilty Bees are kind of getting a little too far down deep. That was why some of those passes were able to come across. They're not covering their man as tightly as they have been. Another face-off win by the Canucks. They've done a very good job at winning critical face-offs in this game. A nice defensive play, and it could be a two-on-two shorthand, a two-on-one shorthanded, that is. Marino Moro has Rogers going to the net is deflected on a chance. Rogers has to go into his skates. He dives to keep the puck, and Marino Morrow also trying to get it, but now the two forwards are caught deep. Kyle trying to get him, and Donka shoots, scores! Mitch Mendonka with a lethal release into the top corner, and it's a power play goal for the Canucks. And you could see Marino Morrow, after he did that little flyby try to keep the puck in the offensive zone, he tried coming back. He barely got his stick towards Mendonka by the time that shot came off. He was a, a step late, and Mendonca looks like it might have taken a piece of the pad of Constantini, but either way, a hard shot for Constantini to stop. And that is now a four-game point streak for number 28 for the Canucks. He also has his 19th of the year, 40th point, and he's got eight points in his last four games, so he's, all, he's averaging two points a game right now. As another icing call coming against the Kilty Bees. And after having such good momentum, such good, uh, such a great amount of success on the penalty kill for Hamilton, last thing you want is to surrender a goal to the Niagara Falls Canucks and give them life in their power play. Eric Mondu, he goes for a spin and that one deflected. Going down the ice is Hughes, but it's gonna be an icing call. So two icings in a row against the Bees. Approaching the halfway mark of this period. A 3-1 lead for the Niagara Falls Canucks. Face off to the left of Cosentini, and that one's actually won forward by the Bees and Noel Ballert. 
Makes a nice little pass. He finds Hughes. That one shot. It was a weak shot. And Ballard's battling in the corner with Schneider. Ballard and Hughes battle for the puck with Garrett Downey. But that puck was long gone by the time they got there. Jerome, little back pass to Hughes. Coming in was Downey. He was going to lay the body on Hughes. So he tried to dump it in. And now Mondu's battling with Andrew Bruno. He's got a goal tonight. Downey knocks down Mondu from behind. Accidentally, it looked like. Bees try to get the puck out of their zone, and Garrett Downey's going to get a penalty. A cross check right to the face of Mondu. Mondu's down to a knee, and Downey's going to go to the box. And Downey and Mondu have been going at each other this entire game. He took him down. You could have questioned whether or not the first time around was a penalty, but that second time, that shot to his face was 100% a penalty. Good call by the referee. Now he's chirping right back at him as he skates away. I think what that started from was when Eric Mondu was knocked down from behind by Downey going on his way. It looked accidental. Mondu didn't like it. Probably exchanged some words, a couple jabs at the front of the net. Then it just turned to a blatant cross check. So another mighty expedite power play. This is the third of the game for the Bees. They have one power play go so far. That one was scored by Noah Ballard late in the first period. And they could use another one to get back into the game as that one's cleared down the ice. Tanner Bernacki coming up. Bernacki a nice outlet pass to Holden Rogers. He's held up at the line by Hill. No call. You could hear Ken Pieroff yell for one there. The coach of the Kilty Bees. Derek Raposo winding in his own zone. Tries to find some space. He finds Marino Moro. Moro dumps it in and goes for his own puck. Backhand pass over to TJ Hughes. Down to Bernacki. Now they have it set up in the zone. The Bees have a minute left on this power play. Bernacki to Raposo. Raposo fires the shot. Save and it's batted down. That was shot back on the score! Marino Moro on the rebound! Power play goal for the Bees! This has been a very good power play for the Kilty Beasts. They've now scored a second power play goal tonight. Marino Morrow gets a puck that was knocked down originally by D'Agostino. He tried to clear it, and instead he fanned it right to Morrow. He fanned the shot as well, so it was a bit hard for Moore to find and track that puck. It managed to squeeze past his blocker. And now they're back within one again, and let's see how the Bees respond. Nick Cadero dumps on back in. That one bounces oddly. That's about the fourth bounce we've seen go off these boards. Couple at each end now. These goaltenders are going to be nervous going out of the net to play the puck. And you got to wonder if any of the Kilty Bees are going to start sending back those words to the bench of the Niagara Falls Canucks after being taunted a few times. Lou Croucher in the draw against Justin Rendawa, but Rendawa is kicked out of the draw. Matthew Riva coming in, and the faceoff scrummed and won by the Canucks. D'Agostino tries to clear it out, but is kept in by Croucher. Schneider tries to clear it out. It just manages to get across the blue line, and now Riva has the puck again. Riva against Jerome. He edges him off and then shoves him hard on the boards without taking a penalty. A nice play by Jerome. He does shove him down to the ice, however, and now he's in a battle with Riva. Randawa shoots out. It's deflected side of the net. Nice body play, but Jerome is going to get a penalty for interference. What looked to be a solid defensive effort ends up being a penalty for Jerome. And unfortunately, I have to agree with the referee on this one. He tied him up a little bit too early and a little bit too far away from the net, and he pushed him down. And then the and the referee, who was staring right at them, almost just waiting for a penalty to happen, finally called it. As those who were battling hard after Jerome knocked him down into the boards. The only plus side is that if he didn't do that, Riva had a tap in. So at least he tried to save a goal. Now one shot by Hill, save made. And now Mason Reeves has the puck and time to clear it. He plays that one high off the glass and back down to Zach Moore. And that's one as a coach you can usually swallow because that's what's considered a good or ne uh, necessary penalty to take because most coaches would rather have a penalty kill than a goal against. Mandonka over to Dylan Hill. He dumps that one around the boards. Brenecki goes to try and intercept it. 
Now Ferguson does, and he fans it, but still gets it all the way back down the ice, and still no setup time for these Canucks. D'Agostino. He waits for his mates to regroup. Makes a one pass over. Hill goes in in the middle. Justin Kyle now has it. Or Ben Evans, that is. And going Cadero. He's had a couple chances shorthanded. And nice move to the inside. Evans, another nice move. Oh, what a defensive play. Shoots in that one way. May have hit Ben Evans, the captain. And here comes shorthanded chance. Another breakaway for Cadero. Left side walks in. And no shot! Shorthanded goal! Nick Cadero! That one almost didn't look like it was a goal. You could see some of the Niagara Falls Canucks players. They thought it hit the crossbar and went out, not in. But it was so quick, so hard. What a great rush from Cordero. He's been lethal on the penalty kill. The Niagara Falls Canucks have to keep have to keep him in check whenever he's on the ice, along with Holden Rogers. Holden Rogers and Nick Cordero have been the saviors for this penalty kill unit. And to be honest, I didn't think that went in. I was a little hesitant to say scored until I saw the referee point and the crowd started cheering. I wasn't sure that was in, but what a bullet top corner. Now the Canucks have to regroup. They've now been scored on shorthanded. And that one shot say made going to the front of the net now. But Stason has it. He passed it over to Alec Vent. Seven minutes remaining in the second period. 25 remaining in the power play. We are now a 3-3 game between the Canucks and the Kilty Bees. Reeves battling with his man along the boards. Comes back in front. Patrick McCabe gave that one over to Bestason, and that one's passed across. Now Bestason has it in his skates. That one's cleared back over to Vent. Vent's hit by Rogers. And the power play has now ended, and that one went out of play, but nevertheless, I think you'd have to call that a successful penalty kill. Well, when you score on it and you don't give up a power play goal, that is, oh, that's giving 110% from your penalty kill unit. Usually all you ask for is to not give the other team a goal. And there's McCabe once again jawing. This time he's going at it with Raposo. Might be a different customer than Eric Mondu. And Raposo could definitely handle someone like McCabe. They're both big boys and they both like to play physical. McCabe a little more so than Raposo. Play coming in a nice hit along the boards. Duarte got nailed. And now the Bees try to get the puck back, but it was turned over by Donovan, and Duarte throws it back in. Moore stops the puck out, and he gets a nice little pass off, and now it's the 2-1-2 two -two coming the other way. That one, nice move to the inside. It's his back around the boards. That was Owen Holmes going in and now coming the other way. Marino Morrow, he might have a step. He's on goal, shoots, he scores! Marino Morrow posted in! What a game, what a second period! The Bees have another one! And what a second period for Marino Morrow. First, he gets the second goal of the night for the Kilty Bees. And then he gets the go-ahead goal Two breakaways in a row for the Kilty Bees on two different scoring opportunities. And even the Niagara Falls Canucks are wondering, how have you let this game start to slip from your fingers? You've been doing so well on the puck control on the defensive end. Hamilton's been fighting very hard for what they've got. And right now, the Kilty Bees are just pushing them harder and harder on their heels. And the one thing you can't blame, Zach Morris had no chance on any one of these goals so far. You can debate maybe the power play goal from Marino Morrow, but that one was another breakaway chance, and there's no chance he's going to stop four breakaways in a row. Noah Ballard shot that one in, and the Bees have suddenly taken the lead after being down 3-1 to one early in the second period. A stretch pass goes for icing, and the Bees get to go back into the zone. Five and a half remaining in the second period. Now all you have to do for the Kilty Bees is just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a very good job of stopping the offense from the Niagara Falls Canucks. You've bent a few times, but every once in a while you got to get back into position and get yourself back in check. They've done that. All they have to do is just keep riding this game out. And the uh, confidence is definitely going to go to the legs of Marino Moore. He's already got wheels as it is, but... Yeah, we'll most likely see a lot more from him coming in, especially in that third period when that comes up. Now and deflected on goal, bounce right in on net. Hill has a bounce on him and almost a dangerous giveaway, but 
Dylan Hill was able to make a good defensive effort. Another shot deflected on goal. Zach Moore plays it away from his own defenseman. He ends up getting over to Ben Evans. Nice intercept. And that one's cleared back up by Mondu. Nice and it looks like it might have been an offside call at the blue line. And you can tell the Kielty Bees are really feeling it after those two quick goals. They're pushing the play. They're not letting Niagara set up on their offensive rushes. And if they can keep playing like this, the night's just going to keep getting easier and easier for them. Back into the zone, coming back out is Becker. Becker to outlet pass. Too difficult for anyone to handle, so another icing call coming against the Canucks. The Canucks look a little bit distraught and dazed right now. They can't believe they've just let a 3-1 lead evaporate so quickly. And unfortunately for them, what's going to happen is they're going to start overthinking some of the simplest plays. And they can't do that right now if they're going to try and tie this game back up. Brenneke just scores! Brenneke post shot it in! It's 5-3! Overthinking at its simplest. Zach Moore thought he had the puck and it went underneath his glove. It's probably a save he'd make 10 out of 10 times in practice. And this time, because of the quick goals, now he can't think properly and he just let a weak one in. This is looking uglier and uglier for the Niagara Falls This Canucks. went from a game that was in complete control to utter chaos. If you're Frank Pietrangelo's team, the Canucks, you had a 3-1 lead early in the second period. You are now down by two, 5-3, four straight goals for the Hamilton Kilty Bees, and they have taken the lead. They have now made it even bigger as the captain is able to score on a shot that, like you said, 10 out of 10 times, the goalie is going to stop that. And you could see there wasn't a lot of people in front of Snack Moore. It was a pretty straightforward shot. There might have been one guy that might have made him lose sight of it potentially, but it was a clean shot from Tanner Brenecki. And Zach Moore just for some reason thought he had his glove in position. That puck did look like it dipped a bit, but it was a shot, a savable shot from Zach Moore and a very bad timing goal to let in. And you can see this has dented his confidence massively. He doesn't look as confident early on sorry, right now as he did early on. And he's not making the saves that he should be making. That, kind of, that can kind of happen when you have so many goals going so quickly on you. And talk about confidence. You saw his, if you saw his reaction, he was shrugging his shoulders just thinking, how the heck am I letting this happen? And Noah Baller comes in in a strong save there. That was definitely a needed save as if that one had gone past him. Not only would I guess that Fortuno would start going in net at this point. He might have been off the bench if after that goal. Yeah. But Zach Moore needs to make more of those saves if he wants to stay in the net and may be able to keep his team in this game as so far it is evaporating quickly. TJ Hughes goes in. He's against Brandon Bastason. He's knocked down on a good battle. Bastason gets the defensive positioning though. Mendonca tries to get out. They're definitely going to lean heavily on that top line, the Canucks are. As we mentioned, they have such a boatload of skill. And now Holden Rogers is battling with Mendonca. Dylan Hill has a lane, takes it. That one's blocked beautifully by Morrow. He's got two goals tonight. That shot cleared all the way down the ice, and it's going to be an icing call against the Bees. Three minutes and 13 seconds remaining in this very exciting and eventful second period. It's always hard if you're the opposition when you you're leading the period two to one. You score to make it three to one, and then you surrender four unanswered goals. After that, your confidence just starts to waver. Justin Kyle puts that one back in front, but the one thing we can't dispense is that this team already has so much confidence in their offensive abilities. Now one shot, another, that was a bad play by the goaltender. He gave it away to Hughes, who almost had about a 100-foot shot go straight in. And we mentioned earlier how much we were marveling his passes. It was a good pass, don't get me wrong. It's just what he was thinking on the play 
We don't know. And a 2 one Justin Kyle finds that one across. And that one was denied by Constantini. They go to the net mount. And they're still battling away. Puck is loose behind the net. Ben Evans is poke checked by Ferguson. Kyle has it. Takes a shot. And a penalty coming up to the Canucks. As the guilty B is on his knees. Look like it might be a high sticking penalty. And it was Cadero who took it. And it was Mendonca who got his stick a little bit too high as the Canucks finally got something to feed on. That was a scrambly play. I'm not sure if Kyle was able to shoot that puck immediately or if he had to stick handle it one or once or twice. But he had to hold on to it nonetheless. That allowed Constantini to rush over. He fell over, lost his stick in the play. The puck went around and a great defensive play from Ferguson to stop them from trying to wrap it in. Scramble mode was on and good thing for the bees that scramble mode came off without a goal going in Couple power play goals tonight. This is the fourth mighty expedite power play for the bees Raposo finds his way to the front Marino Moro trying to kick that one around Hughes back to Brunecki that one deflected down by Moro back in on goal that one just missed Holden Rogers got to be careful almost could have gotten a hooking penalty as he was going for the stick lift TJ Hughes Battling against D'Agostino now behind the net for Rogers. Possession back in the possession of Raposo, but that puck bounced away from him. A minute and 10 remaining in the power play, a minute 42 in the period. Morrow, nice move. He's being hounded from behind. He gets that one in, but nice stick lift coming from Matthew Riva. Brenecki finds Hughes. Hughes to the inside. Nice move. DJ Hughes! That one was blocked. It looked like Justin Kyle got a piece of that, but a nice play by Hughes. Proposal to Brunecki. Less than a minute in the power play. Back in front. Oh, that one almost found Moro. Brunecki gets the puck back. Pass in front. Oh, and Hughes fanned it. What a chance for a tap-in, and he missed it. Drop pass from Pinelli. TJ Hughes tries to bat that one in front, and finally cleared back down the ice. Half a minute remaining in the power play. But they've had a lot of good chances on it. Coming through the neutral zone, it's Anthony Pinelli. He cuts into the middle, tries to find Baller. That evades his stick. That one cleared back to the line, and Mondu can't keep it in. A bad pass from Croucher as Mondu was reversing a little bit. And 10 seconds remaining, half a minute in the second period. And it's a good thing when you can say that this has probably been their sloppiest power play and it's still been a very effective one. At this point in time, you'd rather take a, a power play that wastes time than one that scores a goal because you don't really necessarily need to score. Of course, the teams probably want to up each other as much as they can considering the animosity. Baller, he's tripped and another power play is going to come up. 18 seconds remaining in the second period. Coming right out of the box and going right back in now. The Canucks just finished their power uh, their penalty kill, and they're going to have to go right back to it. And it's Dylan and Hill. Dylan Hill for the defenseman. second time going back to the box. One of their best defensemen. He's, he's not too pleased with that tripping goal, but it was one that he needed to take. bullet has got a lot of speed going through the middle. He tried to cut through him, and he took his feet out from it an easy call. Brunecki can't keep the puck in. Matthew Riva goes in against him. 11 seconds remaining, and Morrow has a chance to go into the zone. Morrow, nice move to inside. Morrow, oh, he just ripped it high. What a chance for the hat trick that would have been. Fired by Hughes. He fanned it, and that will end the period on a marvelous chance for Marino Morrow. Can't believe he didn't get the hat trick. If you join us at the beginning of the second, you'd be surprised to see it's 5 to 3 going into the third period. Welcome back to the Dave Vandertruck Arena for this exciting third period. I'm Hayden Hallett, joined with Eric Hallett. What we just saw was what happens when you have a 3-1 to one lead and you get a little too comfortable. The Canucks went into the second period up 2-1. 
They scored a power play goal early on in the first in the second period. Then suddenly they found themselves four goals down, and now it's five to three for the Hamilton Kill TVs, which included a couple power play goals and a shorthanded goal from Nick Cadero. And the Hamilton Kilty Bees just owned that second period. Especially after the after their second goal, that's when the Niagara Falls Canucks started to fall apart. It wasn't until the third, fourth, and then fifth goal that the Niagara Falls Canucks realized, okay, we need to start treating these guys a little bit more like they're our equals. They almost were treating them like they were beneath them. Even like standing wise, they are, but playing wise, they are, the Niagara Falls Canucks have not been up to par to the Hamilton Kilty Bees. And the one bad thing about having gone to a break when they did is that the Bees had all the momentum as they had a turnover there. As wrong person to turn it over to by Brenecki as it was Justin Kyle. But not only did you have momentum, you had both the goaltender and the entire team completely razzled. They didn't exactly know what to do and maybe they were able to uh, regroup themselves but we'll have to see early on to see if the uh, effects are still being felt from that second period. I can imagine they probably get a bit of a talking to from their head coach. That one shot, a big rebound out, and no icing call as Costantini goes to play it. Brunecki has Riva all over him, trying to get around him, and he does manage to get the puck away. Marino Morrow dumps that one in. Zach Moore around his net. He plays that one around, and that is an icing, a no icing call. I apologize. The power play still going, 45 seconds. The Bees started off the power uh, with about a minute and a half on the power play. Now TJ Hughes coming in. They're not calling that one outside. She scores! TJ Hughes! They've now doubled up on the Niagara Falls Canucks and another power play goal. And the head coach is irate right now. He thought it was offside. So did Zach Moore. He lifted his hand saying, hey, this play is offside. So that might have stopped him for a second to get back mentally into the into the position of, I need to stop the shot. He was thinking, this play shouldn't be happening. By then, Hughes was already by the circle. So he had to set himself. He was a little late on setting himself. So that allowed Hughes to find his spot and just barely put it right past Smore. And this has been a debacle for Moore after that second period. He had such a good start to the game, but as you're, as you're right, midway through that second period, everything just started unraveling for him. Hughes now plays that one out. Anthony Pinelli almost got run over by Schneider, but it's dumped in by Luke Croucher, who hit the linesman. Jerome dumps that one high, but ends up throwing it straight out. So the puck will be whistled down and faceoff's gonna come outside the Canucks zone. And you're, you're gonna have to expect a, a pushback from the Niagara Falls Canucks this period. It's do or die moment for them. They've been the more physical team. Hamilton has done a pretty good job of keeping up. And you're gonna expect a lot more hits coming their way, especially against some of their top players. Puck going all the way down. Brunecki fans on his back pass, but Cadero helped him out, but Cullen Ferguson was not in position. Cadero plays that one up to Mark Duarte. That one almost cleared in, out of the air. Bees try to go into the zone and keep it there, but Matthew Riva gains control of the puck and plays that one back out of the neutralized zone. Duarte has the puck poked off of his stick, and Cadero tries to bat that one just closer to the blue line, and he can't. Coming back in, that one shot and fanned on as Randawa looked like he may have got stick checked at the last second. But Stacey, nice pass to him. Randawa shoots. Oh, the backhand flutters high and wide. Doesn't look like it got a piece of anything, but almost got its way in a couple extra whacks. That one coming from Patrick McCabe. He's got to be careful of that one. He took two blatant extra swings after the whistle. And he's, he's the guy that likes to stir up the hornet's nest as... He's got 124 penalty minutes on the season. He's going to be the guy in your face all game long, no matter the score. As he shows you right there, he's he's right now for the second time this game taunting the bench of the Hamilton Kilty. He's trying to get the, in their heads to try and get something going for his team. And honestly, that's what you want from that kind of player. McCabe is a, an instigator kind of player. 
and he needs to get the bees off their game. And if the best way he knows how to do that is throw some chirps their way, then as long as he can do that effectively without drawing, without getting any penalties to himself, all the power to him. Reno Morrow shoots that one as wide of the net. Schneider plays that one high up off the glass, but it's cleared back, and Marino Morrow now converging. That one shot by Holden Rogers. He misses that one wide. Raposo, now Marino Morrow behind the net. Back to Rogers. Morrow. He's got Kyle all over him, and, and Rogers just keeping that in. Some nice playing from the beats to just kill off some time. Ben Evans. Plays that one in, Eric Mondu has the puck, he goes behind his own goal. Mondu, nice little rush. He comes in, tries to make another move. That one cleared by Moore along the boards. DJ Hughes gets that puck back to the Hughes defenseman and receives a little pass, a nice little chip pass to him. Hughes walks in, shoots, save made by Moore. Played behind the net as two Canucks go on Pinelli, but Pinelli gets back up and gets the puck. Unfortunately, he can't keep possession. Jerome finds Pinelli backhander, and he roofs that one wide of the net. Unfortunately, not on goal. Trying to make a little pass back to him. That one shot. Croucher denied. Nice shot as he was coming in alone in the slot. And a nice save by Zach Moore. D'Agostino trying to clear that one out. Hughes and Pinelli go after the battle, though. Mandonka taking some shots at Croucher. Gives him a cross check. Brunecki shoots that one and a bright pad save made by Zach Moore. That one shot off the back of a guilty bean goes outside of the zone and out of play. And like Mendonca looks like he's getting a penalty. There, he's, it's going to be Mendonca and Luke Croucher who are jawing at each other right up at the top of the circles during the play. They kept going after the fact and Myers, the referee, has just decided he's had enough and is sitting both of them. Both of them are going to get roughing after the whistle penalties. So now Nick Cadero comes in. Face off is one. Duarte helped him out. He scores! Mark Duarte, a rocket off the glove and into the net. And you've got to think that's the end of the night for Zach Moore. I don't see Fortuna anywhere looking like he's getting ready. Of course, he could be in the tunnel right underneath us. And yeah, no yes, Fortuna just on. got his equipment back on. His helmet is now on, and he's going to go into, into the net. Zach Moore has given up seven goals tonight. This is not a goal. This is not a score I would expect to see from the Canucks, who have a, such a great differential, the best in the league. But the Bees just took it to him, and now Noah Fortuna enters the game. He's got a 6-1 and one record on the year with a 2-9-7 goals against and an 8-86 save percentage. So the Bees might be able to pile on even more goals yet. They have scored another goal, the first of the third period for them. And they have... They've gone only four and a half minutes into this third period. And the first thing you want to do on a cold goalie, take shots. They don't have to be good, just take shots. You really want to test the other goalie because he's been sitting on the bench for two, almost two and a half periods. He's, he's not quite as ready to play as Moore is. So he's bound to let in a weak one if you just keep shooting on him. And that's got to feel good for Mark Duarte. He doesn't, he's a very skilled player, and that one shot the first stop of the night for Fortuna. But Mark Duarte, he's only got four goals. That was his fifth goal of the year. And from the amount of times we've seen him rush and dangle through people, you'd think he'd have more goals, but it's just not been a great offensive year for him. No, it's surprising. He's got the hands of a goal scorer, but he plays the minutes of a penalty killer. It's just one of those weird things where you have a highly offensive guy who doesn't produce offensively. Shot, that one deflected wide of the net as the Canucks try to go on an offense. Ryan Donovan in the corner. It's finally taken away from him. Mark Duarte, the recent goal scorer, dumps that one in the zone. Fortuna, Baller goes in on him and Fortuna and Baller collide. And now Bestason is felled as well as he collided with Baller, and that almost was a calamity in their own zone. Bit of some co some comical falls there. Bestation bumped into Baller, fell over, and Fortuna came out to play the puck. 
took the feed out from Fortuna. Dylan Hill has the puck. He lost control. He had a lot of speed, but he had to stop skating. Now he spins around. Dumps that one in, and that goes behind the net. Eric Mondu passes it off. Nice move by Teeple, and he knocks down McCabe. And he's going to fight McCabe. The bad choice. Freddie Teeple, a very bad move as Patrick McCabe goaded him exactly like he wanted. He threw his gloves off, and McCabe decided not to go. That was a bad decision from Freddy Teeple. I know McCabe's been in your face. He's been doing stuff you don't like. He's going to do it. You know that coming into the game. McCabe is going to be doing a lot of physical play, a lot of taunting. Freddy Teeple should have just kept his cool. He's up 7-3. There's no reason to fight McCabe. The crowd not happy. The crowd was expecting to see a fight going on. McCabe clearly told him he was going to fight him. And then he just waited for Teeple to throw his gloves off. So although it's, a, although it's obnoxious, although it's annoying, Patrick McCabe does a good job of doing exactly what he needs to do. Although at this point, you're down by four goals. Not likely that you're going to come back even if you do get a fight. Now Schneider's going on Holden Rogers. Holden Rogers was talking to McCabe, letting him know about his displeasure about the play. Schneider came over to tell him off, tell him, hey, get out of here, you're already winning. We don't need this. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the And the fans are mercilessly booing McCabe right now, and he's just giving them a sarcastic wave. You don't like those kind of players, but hey, when they're effective, they're effective, and I gotta give him credit, he was very effective. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the entire team for the Hamilton Guilty Bees would love to take a run at Patrick McCabe right now. They would love to do that, although Patrick McCabe's a pretty big boy. He's not going to go down easy. And especially with the, the temperaments flaring in a 7-3 game right now, you might see a lot more McCabe, and you might see a little more nastiness coming out. He and Mondu are at it again as Mondu's wondering what the heck that play was. Mondu's not afraid to challenge people either. McCabe clearly has the size difference on him. Maybe about like four or five inches and McCabe is going to get a penalty for that McCabe just got himself a two minute minor for slashing and this is when the boneheadedness comes out Mondu didn't really do much he's getting the gate now and the fans are so excited McCabe just got he's getting the gate they just sent him to the box for a a really dumb penalty. We were just saying how effective he's been, and he does that. And that was probably one of the loudest cheers I've heard from the crowd and the bench combined. As soon as he took that penalty, everyone stood up and started cheering because they don't like McCabe right now. Referee coming over to Ken Pierov, telling him it will be five on five, and now doing the same with Frank Peter Angelo. And that was all from Eric Mondu. He and McCabe have been drawing this entire game. Mondu was just giving him a little And they're lift. still going at it in the box. Teeple and, and McCabe are really going at it right now. Unfortunately, Luke Crouch is between the two giants. <laughs> He's got to watch out. Those two can squish him if they decide to get together. The only worrying part is the moment Teeple comes out of that box and McCabe comes out of that box, you, might see, some pun you might see some more punches being thrown, although it will be coincidentals. So they will need a whistle to come out. So they will come out at the same time, but it will be at least after a whistle. So we'll see what happens there. But after all that commotion, we still have 14 minutes left in this third period. The Kill TV is looking to extend their lead even further. They currently have a four goal lead at seven to three. Nice move to get around Kyle. He doesn't get made, full, made a fool often, but now coming in is Cadero. He goes around, centers it, but unfortunately he misses everybody. Jerome in his own zone. Back to Mondu. Cadero tries to make his way up and he can't. Eric Mondu going against with Kyle and Evans and Cadero takes a run at Bo uh, Ben Evans. Captain gets back up. And now Mondu takes a run at him. A couple players are taking a run at number 14 right now. This game is going to start getting ugly. Every player is starting to take liberties. 
TJ Hughes, he gets the back pass here, he comes back in right in front and he just loses control. But Stacey able to get a stick on it after the fact. Hughes, now Pinelli comes and join him and Matthew Riva going in, but the whistle blows the play dead. Dylan Hill has to be careful. He, he blatantly went out of his way to try and hit Pinelli and he almost stuck his leg out to try and get him. So Hill's got to keep his head right now. His team's already down. Last thing he wants to do is just keep piling on the penalties, keep piling on the goals. And Mendonca and Croucher just finished exiting the box. Now Justin Schneider goes around the boards. He has Bruno along with him. Ballert makes a little pass as he tried to find Nathan Naves. Constantini played that around the boards and Cullen Ferguson trying to get the puck around. He throws his man down to the ice. Couple high swings at the puck, but kept in by the Canucks. Bruno, and almost a back pass given to him from Ryan Donovan, but Mark Duarte comes out, goes to the right side. He shoots, that one a blocking arm save made by Fortuna. Bollard shoots and that one's deflected and it goes wide in the net. Donovan goes cross ice for D'Agostino, but Bollard finds him there. Looks like Bollard may have gotten a bit of a stick in the, in the face, but no call. Rogers, oh, he's almost crunched along the boards. He is taken down, a nice hit. As that was Justin Schneider, now Holden Rogers gets an extra hit. These guys are all taking, like you said, liberties at each other. Naves tries to make a pass, and Kilty Bees regroup with the puck. That one deflected off the stick of Milos Todorovic. Mason Reeves has it back in front. Oh, and that one was played right to Fortuna by accident. A bad board bounce. And that one a stretch pass. Perlick snows the goaltender. And he's going to get a nice little shove as Costantini made the save. And Perlick intentionally snowed him. Are we sure we're not a few months ahead and we're not playing in the playoffs right now? Because this is a playoff atmosphere. There's a lot of animosity towards each other. They face each other multiple times. They're in fact going to go back to St. Catharines after this game. They're going to renew all this hostility over in St. Catharines. So it, it, you would swear that these teams are right now facing game seven, trying to see who can advance to the next round. And if we're lucky, we might get treated to a playoff matchup where these two get to see each other, maybe for the Golden Horseshoe Finals. Could always hope to see. This would be a great playoff series if that would be the case. If it's if this is any if this is any uh, indication as to how the playoffs is going to go, then it's going to be a terrific playoff matchup. We still got quite a while to go before the playoffs start, but the KLTB is just looking to guide this one home. 11.05 remaining in the third period. And a save by Costantini on that last play will cause a face-off to his left. So maybe now the players get to calm down. They've had a lot of stoppage time. This third period has gone on for quite some time at this point. And now Dylan Hill pushed off by Mason Reeves. Ben Evans tries to play the puck. It goes off of Brunecki. Justin Kyle gets away from the corner. Tries to make a move around Jerome. He can, and now trying to come back out is Kyle. That one shot. Rebound in front. And that one cleared back outside of the line. Nice couple of stops by Costantini. Justin Kyle gets the pass. And a nice intercept. As that was Luke Croucher, who then got punched down to the ice. Hughes swerves in. That one shot high and wide. Reeves deflects that one behind the net. Hughes on his backhand tries to take it. And he does. Nice play for him to keep it. Now jump in Croucher. That one blocked in front. Rebound. Oh, nice save. Right pad stop by Fortuna. But Stason almost lost control of that puck as Mason Reeves came in at him. Cadero throws a hit on Bastason. That one shot, pad save, rebound! Oh, that one may have been blocked by Brunecki, but either way it went high and wide as a big rebound came out off the right pad of Costantini. Jerome works his man over in the corner. Justin Kyle, though. He has the puck, and that one's cleared about out of the line. Mark Duarte coming out. Tipo McCabe are still drawing in the penalty box right now. Tipo standing up trying to tell him off. Cadero 
bulldozing its way through, and Bastason just kicks the puck away. He didn't have his stick anymore because Cadero had knocked it out of his hands. Cadero then passes on back to Raposo. He fans on it as Owen Holmes goes after it. He's trying to make their way through the zone as Ballert. He's knocked down at the offensive blue line, and he battles with Holmes. Nice job from Ballert, and he gets around a couple players, and the, crowds get, the crowd gives him a little bit of a round of applause for his effort. Pinelli shoots it, and he wires that one wide. That puck was just rolling on edge. Pinelli had a good opportunity. If only that puck was laying flat. And Bastason and Anthony Pinelli give a couple shots to each other. And they're both going to go to the box as well. So now McCabe and Teeple have some pen pals again. The referees, I think, have had enough of all of, all of this. The players are just trying to run each other over into the ground as both Teeple and McCabe go up. You can oh, see the linesman immediately pushing Teeple away. And he, I think... And McCabe and Teeple are both getting, are both being ejected from the game. It's not surprising considering... The crowd loving the fact that number 10 for the Canucks just got ejected. It's not surprising to me that they're both getting sent off considering they, they seem like they're both ready to punch each other out at any second. Face off to the right of Noah Fortuna. It was scrummed and then won by the Canucks as Garrett Downey has the puck along the left side. He's going for a nice rush. He tries to bulldoze his way through Raposo. Bruno comes in to help out. Lou Croucher. He stops up and spins around. Makes a nice pass to Ferguson. Ferguson to Hughes. Nice outlet pass. Beats come in. Nice move around his defenseman. That one shot. One-handed wide of the net. Fortuna covers it up. And another faceoff coming with 8.30 remaining in the third period. And every single time that there's a whistle, you always see a bunch of players taking each other. Sometimes the little cross checks are thrown, sometimes they just throw each other around. But you can feel the animosity for this team outside the building. That's how much they, these teams just don't like each other. These last 12 minutes have felt like 20. It's felt like a whole period and a half has gone by, but it hasn't. They're, we've just finished passing the halfway mark not too long ago. Todorovic coming up for the Canucks. He just sidesteps a hit from Mondu. Duarte comes back to help defensively. Now the Bees clear that one up and out of their own zone. Nice clear. Justin Schneider in his own blue line. Schneider makes a pass and that goes all the way down for icing. Exactly eight minutes remain in the period. And the one thing you want to be careful of for both sides is injuries. Both teams are trying to hit each other into the ground. Last thing you want is an errant knee, an errant elbow that can hit someone in a sensitive area. All of a sudden they're down and now they can't play for a few games. Nathan Naves battling with Justin Schneider, gives him a couple slashes. That one comes along the boards. There was Noah Perlick, recently acquired in a trade with the St. Catharines Falcons. That one played back in front, Todorovic. He gets pushed down hard by Eric Mondu. Almost got the puck back in the slot. Now Mason Reeves goes out. Reeves against Agostino. He just chips that one in. Nathan Naves goes against Schneider. They battle along the boards. Reeves comes in to help out his, forward, his other line mate. Canucks finally are able to ex exact themselves from that pile. And another icing call coming from the Canucks. So neither team is really getting any kind of play. Although most of the offensive zone time still seems to go to the Bs. And it's because of... That second period that the Niagara Falls Canucks are the way they are right now. They can't make good passes. They had, did have some time earlier in the period in the offensive zone, but the decision-making for the Niagara Falls Canucks... Oh, what a great stop by Fortuna! That left Glover on Marino Morrow of the hat trick. And it's too bad as a backup goalie coming into a game. You don't allow a goal. You don't get a shutout, unfortunately. But luckily, he doesn't get pinned with the loss. And... His team has just been making bad decisions defensively. This game will hopefully, for them, 
will just stay the way it is and not get any worse. Hughes' shot is blocked in traffic, and now Justin Kyle, who's been held off the score sheet so far, he comes back, he gave it away. TJ Hughes into the slot, he's hooked down. Nice defensive play. That was Ben Evans, the captain, coming back on TJ Hughes. Mitch Mendonca, he has a goal tonight on the power play. Mendonca passes that one in front blindly, and he gets it back deflected. That one goes right to the side, and it was stopped by Costantini, but it was played with a high stick. Just when the Niagara Falls Canucks thought they could have at least gone another goal against this player with a high stick, but it was a nice track from Constantini. It was up high. It hit him. He felt it. He just saw it as it hit the ice, and Kyle tried to just quickly tap it by his his right pad, and Costantini quickly jut his body over and stopped him. And an icing call was actually negated. So we play on. Outlet pass. That's Mitch Mendonca coming into the slot. Nice pass off to Vent, and Venti, and he gets Bond hit. Who's taking a penalty. Alec Vent did a nice shot. A kneeing penalty. And a power play coming up. It's actually Luke Croucher going to the box. I didn't quite see what he did or who he did it to. Yeah, I wasn't 100% sure where that one came in, but looks like a kneeing penalty going to Luke Croucher. So a power play coming up for the Canucks. And unfortunately, one of your better penalty killers is sitting in the penalty box. Face off one cleanly by Cadero. Mondu then wires it and Noah Baller going around. He might have a two on one. Nice move to the inside. Baller and he's hooked down. No call. Nice play from him as he immediately went to the races. An interesting penalty kill strategy, but and that one was called offside as Ben Evans then takes a little shot at, Mo at Alex Jerome on his way by. That's uh, Derek Raposo, apologies. Derek Raposo's not happy with Evans. He's just irate at him. That extra shot, he was not happy. Of course, he's been taking a lot of those extra shots. Everyone has. And it's just coming to a boiling point now. Hill fires that one along the boards. Mondu can't handle it. Kyle does. D'Agostino just keeps that one in. Dylan Hill now fires that one deflected well high and wide. And... That one just comes outside of the zone. D'Agostino backpedals. He finds Evan. That one poked off of his stick. Dylan Hill makes a pass to D'Agostino. D'Agostino has Kyle going to the net. He finds Mendonca, and that one's gloved down by Marco Cozzantini. And Ben Evans taking a couple extra shots, and now Mendonca is going to go to the penalty box. He just took a penalty by tripping over Derek Raposo. At least I believe that's what the penalty is for, but they definitely did say that Mendonca is going to get a penalty. For a second, it looked like the linesman accidentally took him out. Ben Evans is being ejected, but Mendonca is going to go to the box. And now Dylan Hill is going at it. He's going at it with Eric Mondu. And Mondu has been the thorn in the side of the Canucks tonight. Every time something's going on, Mondu is there trying to stir it up even more, trying to draw some penalties. He's, he's done so very well. He's been the Kilty Bees virgin of Patrick McCabe tonight, just drawing penalties left and right. So they're going to sort all these penalties out. Two of the best defensemen in the league right there talking with one of the referees. Tanner Brunecki and Dylan Hill, two very gifted offensive defensemen. So it looks like we're going to have some four-on-four -four action. Four-on-four -four action for 52 seconds, and then so for 52 seconds there will be a power play, but a minute and eight seconds of four-on-four. -four. So it starts off with five minutes remaining in the third period. Garrett Downey enters the zone. Ferguson goes for a check. He actually falls down. Then tries to clear it out. Anthony Pinelli gets around him. And Justin Schneider makes a little back pass to his defenseman. That was Bistace and it was cleared off of his stick. And Jerome and Colin Ferguson go around. And they almost both lose their defensive coverage. 
Brandon Bastation shoots that one, deflected off of Colin Ferguson as he blocked it and went wide. Downey, he's hit by Jerome. Ferguson clears that one right back to Jerome. He's stick lifted. Ryan Donovan. Donovan gets it back. That Garrett Downey to right back to Donovan. Schneider shoots that one blocked beautifully. That one shot and just missed. Pistason tries to keep it in, but it's one-handed chipped around him. Pinelli and Mark Duarte try to get the puck back, and now Justin Schneider comes back. That one fired high and wide. Cleared back down the ice. And because the Kill TBs are now on a power play, that is an icing call against them. Ryan Donovan just took a shot at Pinelli as they were both going to the bench. Not sure when the shoving is going to stop. It's probably going to stop once the last four minutes and four seconds go by. It's going to be a long four minutes. It's already taken but 13 minutes for the last four minutes to go by. So we'll see how much longer this final four will take. Anthony Pinelli, nice move. He finds Duarte. Baller. He's battling hard. It's actually Croucher out there, not Duarte. Jerome just dumps that one in. The Bees are going to try and kill as much time as they can. Baller now to Croucher. Jerome goes across for his man. Croucher had a chance. Oh, and he fanned it. He may have towed it off his own stick. Power play almost came through with another goal. And Constantini has Bruno on him. That was shot. Oh, Bruno out in front. Oh, what a save. Constantini makes another stop. And he does keep it out of the net as Bruno was left alone twice. And number one denied him every single time. He tried with the moves and backhand it, but he didn't get enough, so he hit the pad of Constantini. And good on Bruno. He managed to keep with the play. He tried to stretch it around Constantini, who was on his side at the time. And luckily for Constantini, he got his arm down at the right time. If not, that could have slid underneath his elbow. And between his elbow and his and his body. And I'm not sure how he managed to keep the other wax out, but Constantini is just lights out since that second period. Face off just coming outside of the B zone. It's scrummed and won by the Bees. Baller battling with it. All of the penalties are over, so we're back to some five-on-five -five action. Kudera's getting into it with Perlick right now. They're letting them skate. I think the referees even want to go home at this point. Noah Ballard stops up. Oh, and he's crushed. Well, mostly of his own doing from behind because he stopped up. That one shot deflected and just missed wide as Ballard may have been able to get one. That one deflected out of play, but some more rough stuff coming. Noah Perlick's been into it all night with a bunch of different players. But it looks like the faceoff is now going to go stay inside of the zone of the Niagara Falls Canucks. Holden Rogers going against Garrett Downey, but Downey is removed from the faceoff draw. So Bruno has to come in. He tries to win it forward, but now Donovan pokes that one outside of the zone. Rees, oh, he's hit hard by Donovan, who's just trying to shovel him off. And now Donovan trying to go at it with Reeves. Reeves doesn't seem like he wants much of it. He's just trying to skate along, and Donovan's going at it. Colin Ferguson tries to get around Donovan, but he jumped and ended up putting himself on his back instead. That was one of the most interesting takedowns I've seen all season. It almost looks like he tried to piggyback ride him. Ferguson makes a pass to Nathan Naves. Nice little between-the-legs pass. Reeves shoots. He wires it high and wide. Rogers back pass. To Ferguson, that one dumped back in deep. Mason Reeves now has it. Two minutes remaining in the period, in the period and in the game. Holden Rogers keeps that in. Nice forecheck from in. Tries to skate, trying to get his skate to keep it in, and he can't. Ferguson puts that down and dumps it right back into the zone. Schneider passes that one across to D'Agostino. Garrett Downey gets finished off by Mason Reeves and. Those two get reacquainted. 
Bruno gets his stick lifted at the last second. Reeves makes a nice little pass. Ballard now comes in. Ballard shoots. They made. Reeves tries to go out of the air. And now Ballard going for it. And he falls over. Ballard back to the inside. And now coming back the other way is Owen Holmes. And I'm pretty sure we know for a fact now that. Another shot by Toto Robic on a nice rush by Holmes. And nice save by Costantini. As now they're all just trying to throw the body around. And for sure we know now for a fact that the referees have put the whistles away. Mason Reeves took a blatant slash right in front of the ref. He was looking directly at him, but the referee just sat there and did nothing. I'm pretty sure they just want this game to end. Mondu plays out along the boards. The last 40 seconds in this game, and what a period! What a period it's been. A lot of extra stuff going along as an icing call is intentionally waved off. I imagine. Goaltender Constantini was waving for an icing, but the referees decided to let it go. I don't think to the chagrin of anybody here, even the fans might want this period to be over. The game's already decided. The last thing you want is to just give these players another reason to get together. And as we approach the last 10 seconds, the Bees take down the high-powered Niagara Falls Canucks. We have this last five seconds. You wouldn't expect to see a 7-3 score, but the Bees, after a four-goal second period, along with a power play and a shorthanded goal, have managed to just take this game to the Canucks. They now improve their record to 15-7-0-1 for 31 points. And unfortunately, the, the top four for the Canucks were held mostly off the board, other than a goal from Mitch Mendonca. But... The Hive was bouncing. A lot of players were going at it, just like what you'd think when it happens when a Canuck comes over, tries to get honey from a, hive, from a bee's nest. The bees on the inside, they'll sting you, and they did seven times tonight against the goaltender, Zach, uh, Zach Moore, who was pulled from the net. Next game will be these two. They will be going at it back again on Friday, November 30th. They will meet in Niagara Falls at 7 p.m., I have been Hayden Hallett for Eric Hallett. Thank you for joining us at the Dave Anna Truck Arena. We will see you next Monday.